most of the time, once you suspect the person has a pneumonia, your default or go-to imaging is going to be the chest x-ray. Chest x-ray is pretty helpful in diagnosing pneumonia because it's quick, it's easy, accessible almost everywhere, and it's more likely to show you an infiltrate if there's a pneumonia than your clinical examination is likely to show you uh, egophony, bronchial breath sounds, or increased tactile fremitus. Uh, not that those clinical signs are not useful, but they are not as sensitive as a chest x-ray. Other imaging modalities uh, are CT scan and ultrasound that can be used to diagnose pneumonia looking at the parenchyma. But in looking at a chest x-ray, things that you want to look for are not just extra shadows. It's actually loss of what you expect to see there. For example, loss of the heart border, loss of the diaphragm, loss of the costophrenic angle, and also the pattern of the infiltrate. Um, if you have a system in reading a chest x-ray, you're going to look for the border of the heart, the diaphragm, and the costophrenic angles. Uh, therefore, you're going to see if they are gone, and that's going to be your, your sign of a pneumonia, just in case you don't see an actual infiltrate. Remember, you see what you look for, you recognize what you know, so if you don't look for it, the loss of the hemidiaphragm, then you're not going to see the infiltrate that's sitting on top of it, that's making it silhouetted. So a couple of examples of, um, of uh, pneumonia infiltrates. Uh, this is what a normal chest x-ray looks like. You have uh, very clean pleural margins. Uh, they are not thickened. You have uh, obvious uh, costophrenic angles that are sharp. You see the whole length of the diaphragm on the left side. It's, not, it's, not, it's very clearly visible behind the heart. It's very clearly visible along all of the right side. And you get the heart borders really, really sharp and clear. You don't see any extra shadows within the, within the parenchyma itself. Uh, of course, these are margins of the scapula, not to be confused with a, with a shadow of an infiltrate. While this x-ray is abnormal, it's, uh, again, um, it's got pleural margins that kind of start becoming hazy around the middle of the chest on the right side. You also notice that on the, on the left side, the pleural margins are distinctly different from what they look like on the on the right. Also, the heart border that's uh, pretty much sharp in the lower uh, field, in the upper field, kind of becomes hazy close to the aortic knob, uh, underneath the aortic knob, close to the pulmonary vasculature. On the right side, you have loss of the right heart border, complete loss of the right heart border, and where is the diaphragm? I don't even know where it is, which means there is something sitting, obliterating this uh, sharp margin, uh, which we call the silhouette sign. Plus, this infiltrate seems to spare the airways, at least in their central uh, distribution. You can see the airways very clearly, which, which means there is there is alveolar filling process outside of the airway, which is consistent with a pneumonia rather than a collapse, which usually occludes both the airway and the parenchyma behind it. There's a little bit of shadow on the left side, right here in the upper lung field. Uh, of course, this can still be a pneumonia in, or an infiltrate, alveolar infiltrate, uh, but it's not clear just from this picture. Another question that you, you, should, you probably would be thinking about, is this all a consolidation or is there an effusion that I'm not seeing? The answer is a chest x-ray can't tell you if there is an infiltrate uh, alone or an infiltrate and an effusion unless you see something called the meniscus sign, a really clean, sharp, um, fluid layering level. Uh, it's not visible most of the time, so you don't really know if this area is uh, just consolidation or if there is an effusion in addition to the consolidation, not by chest x-ray. Another example of uh, a pneumonia here, a, a a lobar pneumonia, which affects one lobe, uh, one lobe distribution, is um, let's look at the frontal uh, view. There is a um, a pretty sharp margin 
of an infiltrate, sparing the upper lung field and filling in the lower lung field. I'm saying lower lung field, not lower lobe, just because I'm not sure from the frontal view if this, is, if this involves the lower lobe or just the middle lobe. Because it spares the diaphragm, the diaphragm is still sharp, it's more likely to be middle lobe, lower lung field x-ray abnormality. And because it touches the heart and it obliterates the margin of the heart, makes me think more, more than not it's a, lower, it's a middle lobe infiltrate. Looking at the lateral will make this look very clear that the infiltrate only fills in the right middle lobe and it doesn't, doesn't touch the lower uh, lobe at all. As far as the diaphragms, um, the lower diaphragm here is what, what is uh, demarcated by stomach gas bubble uh, as, as, the, as the left hemidiaphragm. And the upper diaphragm here is the right, uh, right hemidiaphragm that uh, just higher in nature than, than, the, than the left. There are other things you can look for to decide which diaphragm is which. Uh, usually the diaphragm that extends farther in space is the right uh, hemidiaphragm because it's farther away from the cassette. And the diaphragm that cuts through the heart is the right uh, hemidiaphragm because the left hemidiaphragm is going to sit underneath the heart and it's going to be silhouetted by the heart usually. Another type of pneumonia is uh, bronchopneumonia. Uh, this is where you get patchy infiltrates that fill up the space around the airways but don't follow a lower, con a lower uh, uh, distribution. So you can see part of the lower lung field is free as well as a part of the upper lung field. Uh, the infiltrates look patchy. Uh, they usually run along uh, the bronchial tree, but they don't cause um, uh, complete uh, uh, bronchial uh, opacification. Does this mean the person has a particular organism or another? Not really. Uh, unless the person has a low bar, low bar pneumonia, which means they're more at risk of having streptococcal pneumonia, uh, the differential is very broad for bronchopneumonia. It could be it could be any of the typical organisms or the atypical organisms. As far as the pattern described as interstitial pneumonia, the word interstitial and alveolar are, are not really a chest x-ray description. They're mostly a histo, histopathologic uh, description. So if you look at an, x, at an x-ray and you see lines, lines, it's, it's probably more useful to call it a reticular infiltrate than an interstitial infiltrate but I know there's a there's the description of interstitial pneumonia and everybody uses it and that's fine as long as you recognize this could be a could be typical still or atypical organism that causes uh, this pattern here uh, usually you want to look for the pattern of distribution is the infiltrate central? Is the, interf is the infiltrate going all the way out to the periphery? Uh, if it's more central, there is costophrenic angle blunting, there is hilar widening, then it's most likely not a pneumonia, but a CHF exacerbation or, um, or pulmonary congestion. If the infiltrates do go out all the way and they don't carry the pattern of, uh, of association with uh, pleural effusion and, and cardiomegaly, then you're more likely to be dealing with a pneumonia rather than a, a heart failure situation. The main question is not, does my patient have typical or atypical? The main question is, does the patient have a pneumonia or not? Again, if you don't treat your patient quickly with the right stuff, and you find out later that the patient did have a pneumonia, then you've increased the risk for more, of mortality and morbidity for the patient. So again, it might still be suspicious for CHF, but if the person has clinical signs of infection, you're stuck and you have to treat for pneumonia, even though the person might have a picture that looks like CHF. Because just having CHF doesn't mean you don't have pneumonia, and most likely if a person is at risk for heart failure and they get a pneumonia, this will worsen their heart failure. So they might, pre they might present with symptoms of CHF more than uh, symptoms and signs of pneumonia. Next modality is uh, the CAT scan. CAT scans are, are expensive 
uh, they are uh, cumbersome, uh, they do carry a radiation risk, and they do carry a risk that nobody talks about, and it's usually the incidental, incidental findings uh, that will require further investigation um, that might result in morbidity and even mortality, uh, and it's not, it wouldn't have happened if the person didn't get a CAT scan. But we do a lot of CAT scans, and CAT scans can show you a pneumonia really, really well, because you can definitely see how this fits the picture of uh, a uh, um, bronchial sparing alveolar filling process, uh, which is most consistent with, uh, with pneumonia, especially that it's unilateral uh, and it's following a low bar distribution. In addition to the pulmonary infiltrate, uh, a CAT scan will show you if there is other stuff like pleural effusion, and if there is a mass underlying um, underlying the process, in this case there is no mass, of course. And sometimes if you've done a contrasted CT, it will show you if there is a PE, and if this infiltrate is more consistent with pulmonary uh, infarction rather than a, a pneumonia, you would spare your patient unnecessary and inappropriate treatments that way. Although people associate the use of ultrasonography with looking at pleural effusions, an ultrasound can actually show you a pneumonia very, very well, and sometimes earlier, uh, earlier than a chest x-ray can show it. Uh, so, the usual, to understand an ultrasound image, you, I have to explain the usual orientation of ultrasonography. Usually, the, the left side of the screen is the head of the patient, the right side of the screen is the foot of the patient, the top of the screen is is superficial and deep is, is the lower part of the screen. So in this case, holding the probe in a, in a sagittal orientation, sagittal orientation, shooting the beam this way, uh, we can identify the diaphragm on the right side because the label says this is a liver. And above the diaphragm, you see an area that looks very much similar to a liver. It's not supposed to be there. What you're supposed to see you're supposed to see a white haze that fills up the whole screen from top to bottom, and that will be air artifact. In this case, it's not an air artifact that you see, but you see an area that looks like a liver, on, and usually referred to as the ultrasonic hepatization. And with it, within it, you can see these areas that are brightly lit. On an ultrasound, exactly opposite of a chest x-ray, air bronchograms are bright. If you see air bronchograms, they're going to be white spots and white lines, and uh, because air is very echogenic uh, relative to the tissue around it, which is uh, filled with uh, purulent material and fluid. So an image that looks like this is considered uh, consistent with pneumonia and treating the patient would be uh, definitely appropriate.